As a teacher and reader of literature, I truly believe that stories are sometimes the most powerful way to communicate what's true. So I want to read you a story. It's really short, and it's one of those stories that sticks with you for a long time. It's a story that always comes to mind when I hear of good people rising up to challenge something they really and truly believe is a great evil. The story is called The White Knight, and it was written by Canadian writer Eric Nickel. The White Knight by Eric Nickel. Once upon a time, there was a knight who lived in a little castle on the edge of the forest of life. One day, this knight looked in the mirror and saw that he was a white knight. Lo, he cried, I am the white knight, and therefore represent good. I am the champion of virtue and honor and justice, and I must ride into the forest and slay the black knight, who is evil. So the white knight mounted his snow-white horse and rode into the forest to find the black knight and slay him in single combat. Many miles he rode the first day, without so much as a glimpse of the black knight. The second day he rode even farther, still without sighting the ebony armor of mischief. Day after day he rode, deeper and deeper into the forest of life, searching thicket and gully and even the treetops. The black knight was nowhere to be seen. Yet the white knight found many signs of the black knight's presence. Again and again he passed a village in which the black knight had struck. A baker's shop robbed a horse stolen, an innkeeper's daughter ravished. But always he just missed catching the doer of these deeds. At last the white knight had spent all his gold in the cause of his search. He was tired and hungry. Feeling his strength ebbing, he was forced to steal some buns from a bake shop. His horse went lame so that he was forced to replace it, silently and by darkness, with another white horse in somebody's stable. And when he stumbled, faint and exhausted, into an inn, the innkeeper's daughter gave him her bed. And because he was the white knight in shining armor, she gave him her love. And when he was strong enough to leave the inn, she cried bitterly because she could not understand why he had to go and find the black knight and slay him. Through many months, under the hot sun, over the frosty paths, the white knight pressed on his search. Yet all the knights he met in the forest were like himself, fairly white. They were knights of varying shades of whiteness, depending on how long they too had been hunting the black knight. Some were sparkling white. These had just started hunting that day, and irritated the white knight by innocently asking directions to the nearest black knight. Others were tattletale gray, and still others were so grubby, horse and rider, that the mirror in their castle would never have recognized them. Yet the white knight was shocked the day a knight of gleaming whiteness confronted him suddenly in the forest, and with a wild whoop thundered toward him with leveled lance. The white knight barely had time to draw his sword, and ducking under the deadly steel, plunged it into the attacker's breast. The white knight dismounted and kneeled beside his mortally wounded assailant, whose visor had fallen back revealing blonde curls and a youthful face. He heard the words whispered in anguish, Is evil then triumphant? And holding the dead knight in his arms, he saw that beside the bright armor of the youth, his own, besmirched by the long quest, looked black in the darkness of the forest. His heart heavy with horror and grief, the white knight, who was white no more, buried the boy, then slowly stripped off his own soiled mail, turned his grimy horse free in the forest, and stood naked and alone in the quiet dusk. Before him lay a path which he slowly took, which led him to his castle on the edge of the forest. He went to the castle and closed the door behind him. He went to the mirror and saw that it no more gave back the white knight, but only a middle-aged, naked man, a man who had stolen and ravished and killed in pursuit of evil. Thereafter, when he walked abroad from his castle, he wore a coat of simple color a cheery motley, and he never looked for more than he could see, and his hair grew slowly white, as did his fine full beard, and the people all around called him the Good White Knight. The End Thank you, and we'll see you next time.